Celestial Stage Rally 1984. Run over two days, Saturday the 22nd and Sunday the 23rd of September, over a course of 20 special stages. This is the 14th year of the Wexford Rally, and this year promises to be the best yet. With prize money of over £7,000 at stake, over 130 drivers have entered for this year's event. Adding to this year's rally is a new event, and it's the prestigious Motor News Rally Championship, contested by Irish and UK competitors, of which 24 competitors from across the channel have entered this year's event. Welshman Bob Fowden, seated number two, heads the cross-channel contingent, and he leads the championship by 15 points at the moment from Mike Patterson, with just two rounds to go. A further championship this year, uh, newly inaugurated, is the Opel Cup Championship, the final round of which takes place over the two days of the Wexford Castle Rally. After eight rounds, local man from Enniscorthy, George Leach, is in the lead, and there's also £5,000 in prize money to be divided between the drivers of the various cadets. At the moment in the background, the rain's starting to come down and we always have rain at the Wexford Castle Rally. It's nearly guaranteed on the, at the annual event. And at the moment in the background, the, the secretary of the rally, Pat Shield, is having um, a talk to the various drivers before they set out onto the 20 special stages. Eight stages here this afternoon and um, a further 12 a further 12 stages then tomorrow. Chairman of the Wexford Motor Club, Frank O'Rourke, and also a founder member. Uh, we're having a, a big crowd here this afternoon. A lot of entries this year, 130? Yes, we have a big entry, 100 and, well, 110 starters. Uh, a lot of cross-channel entries this year because it's around the Motor News, Castrol Motor News Championship. So I'd just like to take the opportunity and, and welcome all the competitors and spectators and hope them all an enjoyable weekend. And I would like to ask the spectators possibly to please obey the marshals to make things go as easy as possible for the, for the club. And a special welcome to our cross-channel entry and wish them all the best of luck. Now, of course, uh, Castrol again sponsoring the event this year. Well, Castrol are back again this year, yes, and uh, very, very good sponsorship we've had over the years and a very good association with Castrol, and we're very pleased to have them with us at this event. Now, uh, we, of course, we, we've moved to uh, Ferrybank Motors for scrutiny this year. That was very kind of... Uh you know, a slight change on last year. We had scrutiny at Ferrybank Motors and we had the uh, county hall here for uh, Park Farmer, which we thought would be a better centre near in the centre of the town, which would help the spectators and the people of the town to see a bit more of the rally. No, of course, uh, we have uh, uh, the chairman of the uh, county council to start the uh, race this year. Yes, he will, he will be flagging them off here at approximately uh, 3 o'clock. Um, uh, 30 second intervals and they will be on the first stage at 20 past 3. The first car will be due to start on the special stage at 20 past 3. Now road mileage is uh, this year? Well road mileage it's, it's uh, about 50% of the, of the total mileage like you know you've got approximately 240 mileage with about approximately half at road mileage and half at stage mileage. Now of course we're very lucky we have a man here uh, seated number one looking for his third Castle Rally this year. Yes, we have Austin McHale who has been sponsored this year by the Dealer Opel Team Ireland and he's, follow he's after his third Wexford rally and he's also using the rally as a shakedown for the Cork International which is in two weeks time and of course we, ha we have the ad added attraction of uh, Billy Coleman who will be running number one or 001 uh, with taking some guest drivers around who uh, whether they were lucky or unlucky they'll soon be able to tell us this evening that came up in, their, in the competition. Now, who was the actual winner of that, do you know, at the moment? I have no, I, no clue. Well, I haven't exactly names. I, all I know is two ladies and one gent, and uh, I believe the gent was from the Monaghan area, and the lady was a housewife from uh, Warford, Dungarvan, and a school teacher from the Cork area. Uh, comes along to the Wexford Castle Rally every year on behalf of Castle to uh, inform the general public of what's going on in the rally. Now, uh, in fact, you're being driven around in style this year. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that, Dougie? Yes, I'm looking forward to this year. This is a new innovation uh, for me. I, for the last five years, have had a different vehicle at each rally. But 
this year uh, I spoke to Reg McMahon and I said that it was quite possible to get one of the UK entrants who uh, wasn't actually driving in the rally to come over and uh, drive me around uh, in the all the stages which means we can now go through all the stages behind the sweepers to pick out the areas where the big crowd congregation is and give a full backup uh, information on the rally. The man picked out is Alan Thompson from the RS2000 Club in Wellington, Telford, Shropshire, who is an experienced uh, test driver and uh, he is an Irishman uh, living in England at the moment and he knows the Wexford area very well so uh, I'm looking forward to uh, doing a full coverage as it were of the Wexford uh, two stage. Well, perhaps we can have a word then with Alan. Now, Alan, uh, tell me, have you had a run around the stages yet? I haven't actually looked around the stages as yet, but looking from the map, they look pretty good. Yeah. Some nice tight corners, yeah. nice 90 lefts and 90 rights, should look very good. Now, uh, what's your own experience in rallying? Well, since I've moved over to the UK, I've been doing a lot of night navigation rallying, which is very interesting because you're competing on open roads and invariably you have people coming home from the local at night and you can meet them on the road so it's it's great fun okay. very interesting and you're looking forward to the I'm looking rally for, I'm looking forward to going along Hope, hopefully the rain will keep off an efficient secretary of the wexford motor club and here he's um, absolutely up to his eyes in uh, solving the problems of the various drivers pat it's uh, looks like another good event it looks like a good event it looks like we're going to have some rain before it starts but We've allowed for that and have plenty of time to change their tyres before the start. Now, t uh, tell me, uh, we have a lot of entries from England this year. We have 25 entries from England. Of course, this year we're coupled with the Motoring News Castle Championship, has encouraged a lot of the English crews over. Now, the, o the Opel Cadet Cup as well, of course. We have the Opel Cadet Cup. This is the final round of it, and it's um, it all hinges on this event. Finton Foley has to win, and George Leach has to finish third at least to win. So they're both in with a chance of winning the championship. Now tell me, uh, along the way, of course, there's a, there's a lot of stage miles and a lot of stage people along the, along the way that you had to get permission to uh, close the roads and so on. Well, we started working on the road section last June and we had to canvas 120 miles of stages and talk to each of the people on, in every house to get their permission and then approach the county council, get their permission, advertise it in the papers and hope that no one objects before the start of the 1984 rally. Austin, uh, you've changed cars, of course, this year with Opel. Works car. What's your thoughts on the rally before you get underway? Yeah, well, it's basically a semi-works car. It's Manta 400, as most people know. Uh, it's an excellent car, really. Very quick. Uh, it's stage but suitable down here because um, I think the stages are, last year's stages were fairly fast. I think some of the stages are the same again. Now, rain starting to hop down and on us. How's that going to affect you? Well, obviously, I think that the uh, organisers are given a bit of time to go out and change tyres on the way out to the first stage. Um, I don't know actually where the first stage is, but probably the way the rain is coming now, um, probably one intermediates, probably all around or that. Now, your, your first uh, major win, in fact, was in Wexford here just uh, two years ago in 1982. Uh, and you've been doing a lot of testing one here lately with the Cadet GSI. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that in Corsica, off in the Mediterranean, a new ball game? Uh, no, it's just a basically a Group A cadet GSI. Uh, I'd say the car will be very competitive. Obviously, there's still no competition work yet, but uh, I'd say it'll be very competitive when it does come out. Over 3.5, and uh, just speaking to me, uh, you're under a bit of pressure uh, from an injury. Well, we, I had a motorcycle accident about four weeks ago, and um, my arm hasn't knitted back properly. It only came out of plaster yesterday morning and uh, the movement of the arm is tremendously restricted but I'm un having painkilling injections and tablets so uh, the idea in this event is to just take it very easy. Well now of course uh, it was 1982 in fact at the uh, Cork 20 I met you last and you also had a big off in that and spent time in hospital. Yes we spent three days in hospital we went lying fourth overall on that event but um, just one of those things that happens you know when you're driving blind it, it, things go wrong you know. No, the. Uh the Motor News uh, Rally Championship, you're leading that at the moment? Yes, we're leading that by, uh, I think, 13 points at the moment, uh, having had two wins, uh, although we did, in fact, lead the West Cork, we would have had three wins in a row if we'd won that, but we crashed, unfortunately, on the second day. So we, you know, it's a big car, we do tend to have a little few moments with it, you know. Hero of many rallies, 
Billy Coleman, who is just uh, sweeping, sweeping. We're just going to have a quick word with him before he starts off. Billy, uh, who have you alongside of you? This is Margaret Sheehy from Kilburn County Cork, and she's a school teacher, and it's her first time in a rally car, and we're, we're both looking forward to the experience. Now, you're a winner of the Rotmans this year. Uh, how fast are you going to be taking it along with this nice lady alongside of you? Well, we're obviously um, doing sweep car, so we, we can't go that quickly, but, um, you know, we'll be going... Not she, too slowly, I hope. Uh, uh, she's also going to have the problem that she is, in fact, on your right-hand side. That's right. Well, uh, I'm used to being on the wrong side, but it's a new experience for her. Well, that's Billy Coleman that we're looking at. And uh, I'm sure that lady is in for some thrills, and uh, we hope no spills during the afternoon. So the darling, then, of uh, many Irish rallies. In fact, he has won the Circuit of Ireland on three occasions. Well, time approaches. Marie Maloney just comes into picture with us here. But uh, in the background there, underneath the Castrol GTX sign, is seated number one and favourite for the 1984 Wexford Castrol Rally. That's Austin McHale and Christy Farrell, he's co-driver. And we now look at the chairman of the county council, that's Pat Codd, who now prepares to drop the flag as soon as the word is given. Well, we can see Austin McHale and Christy Farrell heading out towards the first stage of the 1984 Castrol Rally. So there we have Bob Foden, Bob Foden and Hewell Thomas all the way from Wales and bringing a big contingent with them. Mike Patterson there and uh, Peter Watts, England in the escort, Mike Patterson. Yep. Richie Healy, one of the darlings of Wexford Rally, and comes here every year. Very unlucky last year, just 12 seconds behind Austin McHale. Bill Connolly, local man, in the escort. Ken McKinstry, all the way from down, having come down to Wexford. So we look forward to seeing really great stuff from Ken McKinstry and one of the really top rally drivers in Ireland. Everything in four wheels is so the industry. town of Wexford now really reverberating to the sound of these magnificent machines that have been prepared over the last number of months to run in this rally. Now we move back to the Tarmac champion of 1984. That's John Price from Wales. And John is has been to Wexford on numerous occasions, has been unlucky on a couple of occasions, and perhaps this 1984 may be his lucky year. We now look at uh, James, James McDade and Rory Kennedy from Donegal in the Escona. Motor. Has all the mods. A very good one is Jimmy McDade. There he's just heading off now. Nice That's James McDade and Rory Kennedy Rogers. from Donegal. I think it's a great uh, boost to tourism and it brings a lot of people here to Wexford down here to the sunny southeast and those now well into the month of September it's still quite sunny here and uh, it's uh, this town is a it's a town of historical interest and we're delighted to see so many people from overseas uh, here participating and watching this rally here turnout on such a terrific day here and we only hope the cars looking so well will come back looking equally as well in about four hours time but this looks like being one of the best ever rallies we've ever had of course uh, adding in this morning news championship has meant a lot to the rally it's fantastic the interest is generated now and I think this is only is only the start of um, of uh, bigger interest across channel up see they don't have the facilities we have here and the idea that they can drive on um, public roads although closed it's just something they don't have in the UK you know where they have to drive on in forest uh, stages and um, disused airfields and, and the like so they hear they're delighted with themselves now I just see coming up behind us here local man now in his escort uh, Dick Bailey 
Dick, of course, is a well-known local rally driver. Yeah, now, if Dick doesn't do well here now this year, now I don't know who will because he must know every stage at the back of his hand. He's an outstanding driver now, and he's got something really good under that bonnet. So, um, of course, he was only, he was fourth overall last year. I think I think this is going to be Dick's year. I think we'll see a bigger. I think we, I think we'll see Dick way up the charts now this year. Now, who would you who would you say is going to win this rally? Of course, we have Austin McHale and Bob Fowden. Well, I've um, I've a quiet a quiet bet on um. Um, Richie Healy. I think Richie Healy will do it this year. I hope so. Bullock Keogh with you. Eh? Bullock with you. Yeah. Have a good rally. Thank you very much. I hope so. All right. Frank Lanella and Frank Bove and uh, Eamon Bullock Keogh. Needed uh, number 27. It's in the, it's a Cultra. And he's from the County Down and it's uh, Brian Nelson in fact. Brian, how do you see your chance in the Wales Rally this year? Uh, we're looking forward to having a good drive, trying to prove the car a little bit more yeah. and having a bit of good time. What's your CC underneath the bonnet? Oh, it's basically a fairly conventional 1600 CC. On the first car we see, that's Richie Healy, number four in the Escort. There we have him. That's Ken McKinstry, the flying 1984 Welsh Rally champion in the Renault Turbo comes towards us, really flying. Again, you can see him there with daft trucks sticking up behind. That's only so well that's number 11 there, that's Ian Donaldson. Donaldson, and now we have number five, it's Billy Connolly from Carlo, going well. The escort there, that's Sean Murphy from Dublin. That's Armstrong and Huzzy there from Gildare and the Avengers. That's White and Smith, Joe Smith. That's Bob O'Callaghan and Joe Downey from Dublin. No, that's Jackie Harris. And Bullock Keo. And the trouble from Clonmel. What? That's John Joseph, a local man from Euros. John Joseph. That's Ron Beechcroft and uh, Joan Milling. And Dick Bailey and Liam Fenley in the escort. Oh, as Paddy Byrne passes through another local. That's Rushford and Brown there in the Sunbeam. Well, it's driving very smoothly in there. there. That's Bateman and Joy in the TR. And we have the opportunity of seeing is number 38 there, that's Cardell, all the way from Wales. Another sun being this time, and that's Norman Kittle and Desi Wilson from down in the The university men from Cambridge find it, finding their way around Cambridge University men going nice and sweet today on the class one. But now we have McGrath and Murphy, the, the local men. The Ford Escort. The cadet, the first cadet that we see, that's Tony Cleary from Tipperary. The Escort. Making its way around towards us of the Opal Championship 55, George Leach from Inniscorty. Driving sweetly through this right hander. That's the man that's uh, chasing George Leach. That's Vinton Foley from Trelly in the County Kerry in the Cadet. Foley and in, in trouble there. That's Henry Fibbs and George Reinhardt, local men. But behind them then is number 57. That's Fergal E from Kildare, who's third in the Opal Cadet. PJ Murphy and PJ making up good ground there. That's Pat Wade and Michael Holmes. Well, colourful escort. That's Carney and Loftus from Waterford. A regular visitor to the Wexford Castle Alley, Derek Skinner in the TR7. Enda Nolan and Liam Carroll from Carlow. Swing a right there, that's uh, Robert Moffat from Monaghan. Well, the first 
ladies that we see going through there. That's Angela Murphy. That's David Cock. The Mark 1 escort there of Thomas Furlong from New Rock. The last Atkinson and Aston from England in the depth. That's David O'Sullivan. That's Corey and Quinn from Tyrone. As you can see, that beautifully prepared escort, and uh, in fact, in big trouble, the Fiercro Ryan colliding with the scenery. Number 82 is Lambert from. And that's Jackson all the way from Kevin and the I mean taken fast after losing a bit of ground. Running way out behind himself there, that's White and Lee from Now that's Kelly and Seamus Boland there from uh Wexford. Uh, very nice sounding Tom Garrity there and Jerry. Well that's Frank O'Connell. That's PJ Dunbar there. That's well, Bernard Cummins just gone through, and uh, you can see him locking hard there. That's McKiernan from Tyrone. Joe Barry in the field there from Kilmagani in County Kilkenny. That's Paddy Whitty, local man, and JJ Whitty from Dun. Another local man, Eugene French in the Mark One Escort. The driver in the Corsa Cadet. That's Murray Maloney. The Mark One Escort there of Kevin Barry. That's with Patrick and O'Brien in the Avenger from Tipperary. Well, we're here on stage six of the Wexford Castle Rally 1984 and we await to see the double O one car and it is in fact Billy Coleman Billy Coleman and that lady alongside him really that team well, we await to see who's actually leading the rally here on stage six sweeper in the double O one car Billy Coleman just gone through and we wait to see if Austin McHale and in fact it's not Austin McHale it would appear Austin McHale has gone out of the rally and Bob Fowden leads it that's Mike Patterson going exceptionally well. And Richie Healy. Richie Healy and the escort. Still no sign of Austin McHale here on stage six. But there is a sign of this man here. This is Billy Connolly from Carlo and Tom Meany, the co driver. It's Ken McKinstry and the All Red and oh, lovely driver. That's Ken McKinstry driving a marvelous sensation. Rally Ken McKinsey, but this is the man from Hereford in Wales. That's John Price, Rally. Ch this is James. James McDade in the Escona. Two and they lose a bit of ground. That's Moran and Fryer there from England. That's Armstrong and Hussey from Kildare in the Avenger. And it's uh, local man Dick Bailey. Dick Bailey it is going through now. That's Jackie Harris from Donegal and the Sunbeam. That's Franco Bovey and the Bullet Kio. Beechcroft and John Millington there from England in the sand. Local man, that's number 33 there, that's Paddy Byrne in the escort from Bally William. Where the cars are going, and there he is in fact. Austin McHale comes along after about 20 cars, and he is in fact still in the Wexford Castle Rally. Back through on stage.
86 here, and now we have Rushford and Brown in the at Knockstown Cross. And that's Cardell from Wales in the Mini, the first Mini that we've seen. In the Escort. That's White and Smith, Joe Smith navigating there. Well, one of the top rally driver there, Frank Marr from Tipperary. But sick there was uh, Frank Marr. But that's Ray Benskin and Oliver Walsh in the Escort. Uh, that's MacDonald and O'Brien from Dublin. That's Bruce Blake and Martin Blake from Mead in the Sun. Well, some marvellous dramatic action here as we look at the Avenger of Kittle from down. Um, second time round here at Knockstown Cross. And that's White and Lee from Tipperary. Only very sick indeed. Number 45 there. That's Joe Kiernan and, and Kevin Garvey. That's Norman Kittle and uh, Desi Wilson. It's going through and now we have this lovely, beautiful guys from Cambridge University. That's Christy Fortis and Ashley Johnston. Behind the Crusader, we have another Crusader. And these is Russell and Whiteside from Donegal and the Escort. Oh, and that's the escort of uh, McGrady and uh, Mac Sherry. Another escort. 51. That's McGrath and Mo Cadet to go around. That's Tony Cleary. From Eastern Fact is next, and he looking for a big payday here in Wexford this weekend, standing to win £1,250 in the Opal Cup Cadet Competition. Finton Fergaleaf just going through and no sign of Finton Foley who should have gone through after George PJ Murphy former clerk of the course for many Wexford Castle rallies in the cadet that's local man Pat Wade and Michael Holmes Derek Skinner a man that comes along from England regularly to the Wexford Castle rally driving the TR that's Enda Nolan and Liam Clark in the thick and fast. Phil That's uh, Phil Kerwin. Gone through. We look at uh, Finton Foley. In fact, that was after losing a bit of time, Finton, and he has a lot of catching to do on George Leach, leader of the Opal Cup Championship. Immediately behind the man from Tralee in the Sweet County, Kerry, is uh, Robert Moffat from Monaghan in the Escort. Well, just going through now, that's Blatchley and... That's Paddy Whitty and JJ Whitty from Dunmain. Now, having uh, had some problems with the Wexford countryside, that's Bateman and Joy. A little bit of trouble there, the another Avenger. And this is the Sab. <laughs> and you can see really dramatic stuff there, straight in and out of the gripe. They're really getting it all wrong, but uh, another one nearly getting it all wrong. Now it's getting a bit slippy here at now. Carol and Mary Carol, and now we have Andy Kirk, and uh, yes, it's really a slippy now, and they're all, we're really getting some dramatic. Because some of the spectators who are here watching the uh, action at Knockstown. Thomas Handel and Patrick, Patrick Hoy from Donegal in the Mini and uh, we were just a little bit lucky there, he nearly came in to say hello. <laughs> Who uh, we saw on stage six and in 
fact, you were leading the rally at that stage. Were we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We, we've got a, we've had a few problems. We've we've been off uh, the shoulders playing up, the arms playing up. We're just going to go to finish now. We just um, take it very very easy. I think. Well, just if we we're, we're only one second um, behind McKinstry, and I think we can make that up possibly tomorrow. And if we can just maintain our position and finish in the first four or five, I'll be quite happy on this event. Uh, Austin McHale seemed to have problems, uh, 15th in fact, roughly when uh, on stage 6, I think he had a little problem uh, somewhere along the line. Did you see him along the way? Um, yes, he, um, he, we, we both got into the end of the stage together on, I can't remember what stage it was, I think possibly as you say it was, it was that stage. He's been under the bonnet since, I don't know what he's been doing, he's been fiddling around, but uh, he's, I think he's back in second place, I think now, is he our third or something? Now, leader of the rally, in fact, at this stage by about 35 seconds is Richie Healy. Bit of a surprise, that, I think. Well, uh, it's a long way from Dublin. To the Wexford Castle Rally, John Price, who was uh, having a successful run or not. Tell us a little bit about what happened today. Yeah, we're going quite well. Uh, uh, the stages are very, very slippery and they didn't suit the car, but, uh, you know, being such a small, short wheelbase car, it made it very, very twitchy, but... Uh, we survived, no dramas. Um, I think we're in a reasonable position for tomorrow. Now, would you like to tell us a little bit about your uh, navigator? Uh, yeah, Mike is uh, Mike Bowen. He has uh, co-driven me for me before. Uh, he's done Donny Gore and several other events, and uh, he's from Zenith Motor Factors in Swansea, and he knows what it's all about. Uh, well, maybe you might have a word him. Now, Mike, tell us uh, how are you enjoying the sunny southeast of Ireland, or in between the showers today. <laughs> Well, it was sunny up until the start of the rally, but uh, we've had rain a lot this afternoon. It's been very, very slippery out there. And to be quite honest, it's a major achievement to get around without without going off. I mean, there's a lot of carnage out there already. And obviously, the first part of the rally is over. The biggest part of the rally is tomorrow, and that's when it's going to count. Now, uh, how is uh, Mr. Price doing here today? As ever, uh, enjoys it. I enjoy every event with John, and, um, you know, he has a go. There's plenty of experience in that uh, head of his. <laughs> And uh, we, we you know, seem to be there. We're in touch with, with everybody. So, uh, we yeah, just how, uh, what is your position, in fact, at the moment, well, roughly? It's a bit um, chaotic at the moment. I think we're about eighth. Third place is Mike Patterson. Well, Dougie Hughes, uh, place, just giving the up-to-date position in regards to the rally after eight stages here this afternoon, and uh, informing uh, the uh, public here that Richard Healy, in fact, leads the rally by just over 30 seconds. and had a change on the stage, punctured in the front and dropped two minutes on the stage. So I'm down just over the two minutes now. Still there's a lot of money at stake, even to be first or second. There is. Well, I came out today. If I never started, I would have finished second in the championship anyway. So I had everything to gain, nothing to lose, you know. Are you going to have a go tomorrow? Oh, sure, sure. Let out all the way and try and get back up. 
uh, leading the Opal Cadet Championship. George, uh, how did you fare out out there today? I had a good day, like um, a bit slippy the first time round, and I wasn't pushing it too hard. But uh, I got going the second run, and I think I put in reasonable times. But I was lying, I reckon, third in the class up to at the end of the first run, and I'm second in the class now, I think. Um, Finton had problems with the puncture, and that's taken a lot of the pressure off me. How, how important is it for you, having done eight rounds of this championship, how, how important is it to win it? I don't want to win, I, I don't necessarily want to win the last rally, I just want to win the Opal Championship. No, that's what I'm saying, uh, the championship itself, the Opal Cup. I want to come first, I don't want to come second. Second, second is nowhere in my Man, You had uh, some problems out there today. Yeah, we went a bit too fast into a uh, 90 left, hit some gravel, went straight on. Which cost us rather a lot of time, really. So. Now you're running very late. We saw you on stage six running very late. Have you made up much time since? I don't know at this stage, really. The situation. But, uh, I'm trying my best. Cyril. Cyril. Yes. Hi, well, just having a quick word with Cyril Jackson. Cyril, how'd you get on out there? Okay, had a few problems, sticking throttles and things like that, but hopefully we'll go better tomorrow. And uh, how are you doing in your class? I haven't a clue. Don't know. You're enjoying the Wexford Rally? Very good, yes. A bit tricky. Okay. Maybe a bit trickier tomorrow? I hope not. How are you enjoying the rally this year? Very, very good. Really good this year. Now, how did you find those stages? Ideal. I love them short. I don't like the long stages. Suited me very well. So uh, Phyllis is, I'm sure, leading at the moment, and I hope I'm in second. Yeah. And uh, what about Marie Maloney? Well, I haven't seen Marie all day, so I'm sure it could be very close between myself and Marie for second, and I'm sure Phyllis, as I say, is leading. Looking forward to tomorrow? Very much.